I'm going to work a couple of problems from the practice test on kinetics, nuclear, and equilibrium. And this, somebody specifically asked for problems, questions 12 and 18 on the practice test. So on, um, let's see, question 12 said that there's a compound uh, that decomposes by first order kinetics. And it says that 25% of the compound decomposes in 60 minutes. So let me just jot that down. 25% decomposes in 60 minutes. And it's asking what half-life is. Okay, so my first instinct is to use um, the equation here for that we know for radioactive decay. And because Let's see, you might remember that n is the number of half-lives, and that equals total time divided by the time of a half-life. So I think, let's see, I'm going to rearrange this formula to get a ratio of the remaining amount over the original amount. Now, if 25% of the compound is decomposed, how much is left? If 25% is decomposed, 75% is left. Now, since this is ratio form and not a percentage, I'm going to put 0.75, and that equals 0.5 raised to n, the number of half-lives. So to solve, um, to figure out what n is, um, we take the log of both sides. So now we have log of 0.75 equals n times log of 0.5. The log of 0.75 is minus 0.125 and the log of 0.5 is minus 0.301. And so to solve for n, let's divide both sides by 0.301. So n equals 0.415. Okay, that's the number of half-lives, so that just means not even one half-life has passed. So the question asked us for the time for one half-life. So if I go back up to this formula for half-life and rearrange it to solve for half-life, let's see, half-life is total time divided by n. Total time is 60 minutes. We just found that n is 0.415. And so the time for one half life is. All right, so time of one half life is 145 minutes. Oops. Come on. There we go. There's your answer. I think probably the easiest place to get messed up and make a mistake here is right here because it says 25% decomposed and you have to process that that means that there's actually 75% left and T is 0.75. Um, all right, so I'm going to work number 18 now. So number 18 is an equation that you would use the Arrhenius, or is a, a question that you would use the Arrhenius equation to solve. And um, how do I know that? Well, number one, because it asks for energy of activation. But also, anytime you see a plot of the natural log of the rate constant versus 1 over t, you should get a straight line with the slope equal to minus activation energy divided by R, which is the gas constant. And in this case, since you're talking about energy and you want units of joules, the gas constant that you want to use with the correct units is 8.314. Okay. So now, um, in order to solve for activation energy, you want to look at the graph and calculate what the slope is. 
I can see now by looking at the graph that they have a nice little slope line, drop, rise, and whatever you say it, rise and run, drawn already. So let's see, the change, the slope is change in Y over change in X. And so that would be, it looks like the change in the Y value goes from, oops, minus 6.5 minus negative 10.5, all these negatives, yikes. All right, that's the change in the Y value that they've marked off. The change in the X value is, let's see, that looks like uh, 0.00195 for the first value. And the final value looks like 0.00215. All right, so doing the addition and subtraction, the slope then is, let's see, the numerator comes out to a difference of four, and the denominator, oh, it's gonna be negative. The denominator comes out to be, yipes, I can't add that in my head, sorry. There we go, okay. So, point oh 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 two oh. So that gives us a slope equal to twenty thousand. All right, so with a slope of twenty thousand, we set the slope equal to. Whoops, it's negative 20,000. I forgot that negative sign for a second. Equal to minus activation energy over R. And let's see, R is 8.314. So to solve for activation energy, our negatives are going to cancel. Um, we want to multiply both sides by 8.314. And then activation energy is going to be, let's see if I can do this in my head. Okay, it's going to be 166,280 joules per mole. Um, those are the units. And if we put that in scientific notation, that is 1.66 times 10 to the fifth, and that is the answer.